Inside the Tower of London, during the reign of King Henry VIII, two of the Tudor monarch's wives were executed upon the scaffold on Tower Green. Anne Boleyn was the second wife of the king and she was executed by sword, but Catherine Howard was the tragic fifth wife of the king who was allegedly a teenager when she was executed by axe. Catherine had been sentenced to death for treason and adultery behind her husband's back. But one woman who was implicated in the whole Catherine Howard scandal was a woman who allegedly arranged for the Queen to have time and liaisons with her lover, the King's favourite courtier, Thomas Culpepper. But Jane Boleyn was the sister-in-law of the King's second wife, Anne Boleyn, and she has gone down in history as being a woman who was rather sinister, and she may have even sent her own husband to the block on Tower Hill. But her coffin was opened centuries after her execution, inside of the Tower of London's chapel. Jane Boleyn was born as Jane Parker, and she came from a rather noble family, and she was, through her great-grandmother, related very distantly to the King Henry VIII. She was his half-second cousin, and she was raised in Norfolk, and her family were well thought of, and she was then sent to the royal court to serve the King and the Queen. At the age of 14, Jane became a member of Catherine of Aragon's household, the king's first wife, and she was present when the royal entourage travelled to France for the Field of the Cloth of Gold, where the king and the French king met. Jane was, it's believed, attractive, and she was well-liked at court as she got stuck into the entertainment and different masquerades that were held. But in 1525... She then got married to George Boleyn, who was the brother of Anne and Mary Boleyn, and he was the only Boleyn's son. At this time, Anne Boleyn, George's sister, was not involved with Henry VIII, but she was present at the royal court, and Jane and George were gifted Grimston Manor in Norfolk by Henry VIII, and Jane became known from then on as the Vice Countess Rochford. Jane received a number of gifts and items for her new home, which was renovated to a huge extent. However, her marriage was not the happiest, as George was known to have cheated on her many times, and he had a very wild lifestyle in which he slept with many, many women. He had a number of affairs, but when Anne Boleyn then married Henry VIII, Jane was the sister-in-law of the Queen, and she was the aunt to the future Queen Elizabeth I. And Jane and Anne did not get on at all. However, the Boleyns then fell from grace, and it was Henry VIII's frustrations with regards to Anne Boleyn being unable to give him the male heir that he greatly wanted that led to the chaos which occurred with Anne Boleyn then later losing her head on Tower Green. But for Jane Boleyn, the largest effect of this was that her husband, George, was implicated in the charges alongside Anne. George was accused of sleeping with his sister and incest, and because of this, he was executed on Tower Hill. Over the centuries, it has emerged that Jane may have been involved in giving evidence against her own husband, but she was certainly a bitter woman. One historian claimed with regards to this accusation that Jane Rochford found herself dragged into a maelstrom of intrigue, innuendo and speculation. For when Cromwell sent for Jane, he already had much of what he needed, not only to bring down Anne and her circle, but to make possible the King's marriage to Jane Seymour. Faced with such relentlessness, incessant questions which she had no choice but to answer, Jane would have searched her memory for every tiny incident that occurred to her. Jane had not been quick to tell tales, but she had buckled under the pressure of relentless questioning, and it was her weakness under interrogation that gave her future detractors, happy to find a scapegoat to exonerate the king from the heinous charge of callously killing his innocent wife, the ammunition to maintain that it was her evidence that had fooled Henry and destroyed Anne and George. George Boleyn, James' husband, was executed on the 17th of May 1536, alongside a number of other men who were accused of sleeping with the Queen. However, Jane may have even witnessed her own husband's execution, or her sister-in-law Anne Boleyn's execution. She was greatly affected by this new change in position, as the lands which were owned by her husband due to his treason were forfeited, 
and they fell into the hands of the King of England, Henry VIII. Jane had to leave the court to secure her status and her finances and she was then given a good pension and she acted as a lady-in-waiting for Jane Seymour and she was even given accommodation inside the royal palaces and other luxuries, including expensive luxury food. She helped the king get rid of his fourth wife, Anne of Cleves, and Jane testified that he and Anne of Cleves did not consummate their marriage. But Jane is mostly commonly remembered for her involvement with the king's fifth wife, the teenage Catherine Howard. Jane was clearly in favour with the king and Henry VIII may have believed that she was a good influence on his young wife and she was a senior lady-in-waiting for Catherine Howard. She had a lot of influence over the young girl but later Catherine's past would come back to bite her and as she had allegedly been involved with other men, and at this time this was considered not acceptable for the king's wife. But Jane then encouraged Catherine to strike up a relationship with the king's favourite courtier, Thomas Culpepper. He and Catherine were distant cousins, and when she was a lady-in-waiting for the previous queen, Catherine considered marrying Culpepper. And the pair had a lot in common, and more, in fact, than the young queen had with her husband, Henry VIII. The pair met up in secret and had, it's believed, an affair which was physical, and much of these meetings were arranged and organised by Jane Boleyn. And she would be arrested, also along with the queen, when the truth came out. Inside the Tower of London, Jane Boleyn was imprisoned and locked up, and she was interrogated and it was said that she had a complete nervous breakdown as she was, in 1542, declared insane as she was prone to having fits of frenzy. But at the time, the king could not execute someone who was said to have been declared insane. But this wasn't a problem for Henry VIII, who changed the laws of his country to allow high treason to carry the same death penalty even for the insane. Jane was scheduled for her execution on the 13th of February 1542 and she would be executed straight after the woman she served, the Queen Catherine Howard. She had been stripped of this title and inside the Tower of London on the scaffold, Catherine's head was taken off in one swift blow. The scaffold was covered in hay and Catherine had bled a lot and Jane Boleyn was then brought out straight after for her own execution and she then knelt in the blood of the former queen, the woman who she had helped to commit adultery, behind the king's back. In a long speech, Jane apologised for her sins, and she gave the executioner forgiveness, and she knelt on the block and rested her head on it. In one swing, the executioner took her head off too, and then Jane's body was taken inside the chapel of St Peter ad Vincula, ready for burial. As Jane Boleyn was a noblewoman, we must consider a few different things. The king had given specific instructions for Catherine Howard to be covered in quicklime to dissolve and decay her remains quicker, but he probably did not order this for Jane due to her status and the fact she was an aunt of the future queen Elizabeth I. Jane may have been given an arrow chest or some form of coffin also and may have been buried with more dignity than Catherine Howard. She was taken into the chapel of St Peter ad Vincula next to the scaffold site for her burial, but the bones of Jane Boleyn were actually discovered and located centuries later. During the reign of Queen Victoria, the monarch ordered renovations to occur inside the tower's chapel, as she believed it was somewhere which was not fit to house the burials of a number of queens. The floor in particular was very uneven, and because of this there were a number of exhumations ordered of those who had been buried in there. Amongst the bones found were those who belonged to Anne Boleyn, Henry's second wife, and Jane's sister-in-law. But other remains were found too of high-profile people. A committee gathered to help identify the remains of these people, and they deliberated on what they found. In the site close to where it was believed that Catherine Howard was buried, no remains of the fifth wife were located except a small pile of bone which had been affected by the presence of lime. But the first bones located belonged to a woman who was dated to have been around 40 years old, and the committee reached the conclusion, due to the location of where Catherine Howard's remains should have been, 
as well as the evidence that this was Jane Boleyn. This skeleton was clearly of a woman who had been executed using a sharp instrument, such as an axe, and it was stated that she was around 40 when she was executed. And because of this, it was concluded that these were Jane Boleyn. They were found close to a second woman's bones, who was said to have been a woman of considerably advanced years who had been tall and above average height. And these remains were of Margaret Pole, the Countess of Salisbury, who was executed also during the reign of Henry VIII. It appear these two noble women were buried next to each other, or close to each other, out of respect for their position. Later, the remains of Jane Boleyn were removed whilst the renovation work took place, and they were put inside of a lead casket and a small plaque marking who the bones belonged to was made on this. But she was then reinterred inside the chapel of St Peter ad Vincula, close to the high altar near to Anne Boleyn's remains and also Margaret Pole. Her husband, George Boleyn, was also identified during this process and she was buried close to him also. Jane's reputation in history is debated, as some believed she was a woman who told the authorities about her husband's actions that led to his execution, and these charges that he was accused of were ultimately false. But Jane's execution inside the tower was also brutal, as she lost her head at the sharp blade of the executioner's axe, and centuries later, her remains were dug up. Thank you for watching, and support. Please subscribe to Her Remarkable History. Thank you.